Make creativity your lifestyle so you never have to chase it again. If you wanna learn a little bit more about actually how to do that, I'm gonna go inside because it's a little windy out here. So the first thing is to define what your creative lifestyle looks like. Everybody's creative lifestyle is going to look, feel, smell, hear. Did I get all the senses? <laughs> different. We're all different humans. Some people's perfect creative lifestyle is waking up, having a nice slow coffee or tea, looking out the window, listening to the birds going outside, going over to their studio. It's like 10 a.m., 11 a.m. now. They're painting for a few hours. They come back, make a nice long lunch, go out, they paint a little bit more, maybe check some emails, and then to relax the rest of the day. Other people are going to want to wake up a little earlier, immediately on some emails, popping in and out of meetings, running downtown, heading over to their friend's studio, all while carrying around their cute little lunchbox with their prepped meals, ready to go since their days are a little bit more hectic. Good hectic. Then there's people who want it in between. Maybe one day is a little bit more relaxing, maybe four or three of them are a little bit more of a hustle, but it's always kind of surrounded by calm and intentionality. The first thing you need to do if you want to understand that creative lifestyle is actually define it for yourself. A great week is a, a good way to imagine it. I've worked jobs where there's like one typo and everyone's like, oh my gosh, code red. My ideal creative lifestyle is far from that. My week might look like on Mondays and Tuesdays, I'm doing a lot of music production and YouTube production and writing some blog posts and doing some creative things for my business. On Wednesdays, I have days off when I go to yoga and I hang out with friends. Maybe I grab a bite of lunch. I do some fun things that I don't need to do for my business. Write some music, go for a walk, like go downtown, whatever I wanna do. Thursdays and Fridays, I would probably go over to the studio a little bit. Thursdays and Fridays are really great because Thursdays and Fridays have that Friday energy where people are kind of like, meh, it's the end of the week. We can be a little bit more chill. I'm working with the team on music, planning, recording some more content, working with just amazing, super awesome people in the process. And then on the weekends, doing whatever I want. I think that's the reality of like having a creative lifestyle is ultimately you as the creative you want a sense of freedom. When a lot of people are searching up YouTube videos about being more creative, it probably stems down to you want to be more creative because maybe you want to make creativity your full-time job. You want to make creativity your full-time job because there is a sense of freedom to having a creative lifestyle, the freedom to do what you want with your time and ultimately to do something that you love, whether you're an artist or performer or a song writer, any sort of creative, you want to have that flexibility in your life that you don't have to have all of these feigned timelines and pretend made up fires. You want to have a life that is beautiful and you're creating something from nothing and you're sharing those creations with the world. That is absolutely something you can achieve. As we plan for this creative lifestyle, it'll be really helpful for you to actually make a notion page, call it my creative lifestyle, and just start writing down some things that you feel like you would want in this dream week or dream month. This should include speaking this in present form. I'm I am doing this. I'm waking up without an alarm between 8 and 9 a.m. Add emotions to it too about what your day-to-day -day energy is like if you haven't included in this. Is it quiet, hectic, present, inspired, nature-filled? That's up to you. I was just on the phone with my friend yesterday and she said, I really like how my life is a little bit hectic. I like how hectic it is. And I said, that's great, that's amazing. For me, I like a more feminine energy towards things, not energy like, go, go, go. More energy like, whoa, look at this new idea. Let's talk about it, let's brainstorm it. That's the type of energy I like. Also in this document, you want to write down what you're frequently seeing, what you're smelling, tasting, hearing, and feeling, all of your five senses. This is where you wanna get really specific. If I really had to think about it, I would hear birds outside, crickets, I would hear nature. I would see lots of colors, lots of flowers, butterflies. I would smell, honestly, this candle right here. I got this candle last weekend and it is fabulous. Palo Santo, cedarwood, lavender, bergamot. I would taste really yummy vegan foods and snacks, fruit infused drinks, warm teas. I would feel inspired, genuine, grounded, artistic, imaginative, feminine. This is how specific I want you to get when you write down your My Creative Lifestyle little notion page or Word document or whatever you like. I want to define creativity specifically too. Creativity is the ability to make or otherwise bring into existence something new, whether a new solution to a problem, a new method or 
device or a new artistic object or form. The other thing I want you to do in Notion, if there's somewhere on your page that you can just denote the date that you wrote this, if you do get caught up in life and you kind of forget about it and you come back, it's always really great to remember the date that you wrote something down. I've created vision boards before and I didn't put the dates on them and I really regretted it because I look back and I genuinely want to know when did I make this because I want to see how far ago it was and where I am now. The next step in learning how to form this creative lifestyle that you basically just define for yourself is to take the next inspired step to elevate your current lifestyle. I'm sure writing this whole outline down is probably making you feel like, well, this is so far away. It is so distant from what my life is right now. How do I even get to it? Sometimes for me, when I envision goals, I envision it to be like, I'm here, the goal is here, and I need to like trek and jump and, and do a bunch of different things to get here. And it's very complicated, but I think people forget that we're actually a lot closer to this than we think we are. If you think to where you are right now and you think back to a time that you were envisioning where you are right now, I just feel like I arrived here. You know, I just arrived. I don't remember having to like do this and this and this whole thing. It was day to day. I worked for it, but it wasn't this crazy thing. As long as time continues to happen and you continue taking inspired action, it will arrive. Let's get a bit more into this taking inspired action thing. There are three main elements to having this creative lifestyle, fostering it, making sure that you are always staying creative, your home, your body, and your career. I know that you have different intentions and budgets and focuses and priorities in your life. I want you to take this as it comes and apply it to wherever you are in life and prioritize these as you feel are necessary and in the amount that you feel like you can do. Let your life slowly absorb these things as opposed to getting drowned in it, if that makes sense. Like if this was a glass of water, if these three things were a glass of water, you don't want to be like, Phew because you're gonna be out of money and out of time and it's probably gonna be very different from what you're doing. I don't know if this figure of speech is actually helping or making it more complicated. <laughs> the first thing is you're gonna take inspired action in your home. Your home's aesthetics are a lot like your clothes. The way that you're going to adorn it is the energy that it's gonna give back to you. If you're going to throw things into a closet and slam doors, it's not going to give you the energy that you want it. It's not going to properly fulfill you. So here's a question for you. If your home cost a million dollars, how would you treat it? Would you treat it any differently than the way that you're treating it now? All of this starts with intentional organization. I believe the only way you can get to this intentional organization is through the Marie Kondo method or the Con Marie method, keeping everything that sparks joy. That's it. She has two books that are very detailed about this, but ultimately the one lesson from both of the books are all you have to do is to keep everything that sparks joy. Now that might be a little bit difficult for you because there might be a lot of things in your home that you're like, I don't, I don't even know where to begin. She outlines this all in her books and I very, very highly recommend you read it or listen to both of them so you can get a little bit more of an understanding of what this is. This is a very spiritual and creative practice actually for you to do. I call my home my studio. My bedroom is my studio. I have dreams of song lyrics. I go to the kitchen and that helps nurture my body so I can go up and record. We happen to have a recording studio in the home, but I truly extend the whole studio essence to the rest of the home. Buy or rent those two books, listen to them, and go through the Conmary process. It's gonna take you a day, it's gonna take you a weekend, but it changed our entire life. It helps you be more intentional with the things around you. I learned a lot about myself. I learned that a lot of the things that I was wearing were passed downs from other people that kind of wanted me to take on this particular persona that I didn't wanna take on. I was like, I don't like any of these clothes. Why am I wearing them? I kind of traded them out gradually with a new wardrobe that better aligned with me. Anything that doesn't spark joy, you can lovingly say thank you, and it feels, feels crappy sometimes when you're like, oh my gosh, especially for things that you got as gifts, but you can thank it and say, you taught me what doesn't spark joy. And for that, I am so grateful. And then you put it in a donation bag, you send it to Goodwill or order a free cleanup kit from ThreadUp. They are very convenient and easy. Now that we have things organized, you're going to find your interior design style and you do not have to be an interior designer to do that. But the environment that you create for yourself is going to be the driving factor of how creative you can actually be. When I went to public school and I had to walk inside there every single day with white cement walls. All the classrooms were freezing. They always had the oldest furniture and desks and chewed up gum and the textbooks. And it was not a place I felt inspired. It was not a place I felt like I could respect anything or anything respected me. That was not a vibe. I want you to do the opposite with your home. I want you to truly look around your home and learn what your interior design style is and how you can actually apply this and make your home your studio. I mean, if your home is truly like the birthing place of all of your creative ideas, then you need to 
make it a place that actually feels like you can be creative. From now on, every time you think home, I want you to think creative studio. So now how do you actually find your interior design style, especially if you're not an interior designer, which I definitely am not. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is go on Pinterest and create a board, call it something like my vibe or my studio vibe or my home vibe. It could be pictures of interiors or not. I just want you to start pinning things that spark joy for you. Now that you kind of went through like the whole experience of sparking joy or at least learning what sparking joy means when it applies to your home, now you can find pictures that spark joy about the inspiration you could have for your home. You might have to search in the search bar something like, I don't know, cottagecore, modern, vintage, dark romantic, things like that. And just pin things in that board that give you that little flutter in your heart. When I look at something and and it really makes me in awe. I feel like my hand has to go over my heart because I'm like touched by it somehow. Start pinning things that touch you. That <laughs> sounds really weird. I'm gonna keep it in. Once you've done this with about 20 to 30 images, you can look back at your board and see what the patterns are of the things that you pinned. Like what are some similarities that you found? Did you find that you pinned a lot of things that have really warm colors like orange and pink and yellow? Do you find that you pinned a lot of things that had maybe cooler shades like blues and greens and purples? Did you find that you pinned things that had a lot of contrast? You liked like stark white and deep black or you like things that maybe merged a little bit more together? Do you feel like the shapes and the styles and the photography styles were a little bit more vintage? Were they a little bit more like faded or maybe grainy or black and white underexposed or more modern. This is gonna help you define your own interior design style. And from that, yes, you could say, oh, I like more modern stuff or I like more cottage core or I like more dark romantic, goth, dark academia. I don't want you to get caught up in like, this is my style. You'll probably find a few different themes that you know. Like I go to cottage core and vintage and dark romantic a lot. If you do feel like there are some names that you're like, oh, I do like influences of this and influences of this. That could actually help you better identify when you're starting to search for different things. This Pinterest board is going to be the blueprint to help you glow up your creative space to be the creative studio of your dreams. Now before you say, oh my gosh, but this is going to cost me a bajillion dollars. No, it will not, my friend. All you have to do is find a few local thrift stores, go on Facebook Marketplace and see when people are doing estate sales, you will be able to explore and curate your home and creative studio now with a lot of the things from these Pinterest boards without having to spend all that money on it. That's actually one of the fun creative elements of being able to do this is not only are you building a creative studio for yourself, but you are also exercising a creative muscle. You're curating a space just like you would curate a song or a piece of art or a performance. It's great practice exercising a skill that you might not be super familiar with. You are basically making your home slash creative studio your own piece of art. And speaking of art, your body is also a piece of art too, which is why number two is focusing on your body or your holistic wellness as a whole. Your body is a creation, so you should be treating it just as such with a lot of care and intention and interest in making sure that it's being preserved. I am not a nutritionist or health and wellness expert in any way, but I do know a lot of things that have helped me better elevate my life and my body so I could best serve my creative projects. I am plant-based, dairy-free, and I'm mostly gluten-free. I also stray away from anything that's overly processed. I read the ingredients labels of everything, and if I see a ingredient that I don't know or understand, I drop it. Static and I have designated stores and specifically brands that we trust, and we use that to kind of shape our shopping experience. This also includes having tools in your home that are serving your health and getting getting rid of the ones that aren't. We've been getting rid of plastic Tupperware. We're really mindful about the specific furniture that we buy. We have air purifiers. It's a constant process, really. So I suggest starting out by creating a cute shopping list, again, in Notion. Categorize your shopping list based on different areas and just make it super easy to access and make it almost templated because this is also something that I feel like clogs up my life a lot. If I have to think about, oh my gosh, what am I gonna buy? What do I have to look for? What do I have to it takes me out of everything. That's a thing overall with creativity too. Everybody thinks that when you're being creative, you can't have any systems because you're an artist, you're gonna be wild and things are gonna be crazy and you're never gonna have a schedule. But that's the only way that you can actually get to that point in your life is to have made a schedule or to have made a system where you can do that and you can still survive and make money and be efficient and not waste time. Making a system for this can really help, especially if grocery shopping takes up a lot of your time 
time and you feel like those sort of health related things can really get in your way and get confusing. Holistic wellness also means booking things like yoga and massages and group therapy, sauna sessions, red light therapy, whatever self-care practices you have, this is something that you need to pre-book in advance. And as I talk about aesthetic organization and lists, make sure to have this in your calendar and color code it with a very pretty color. Treat it as if it is the same priority as a meeting that you have to go to. Put it in your calendar, color code it, add a cute little emoji, make it enjoyable to look at, make it aesthetic, and just freaking follow it, man. It is a never ending process learning more about the ways that we can treat our bodies better. I started out in college just by cutting out unprocessed foods. I was drinking like diet Coke every day and eating microwavable meals. And I said, okay, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Then a few months later, I cut out meat. Then a few years later, I cut out dairy. Then a few years later, I cut out gluten. And now I'm learning every single day, making sure that I am my best self, honestly. This is a never ending journey, but if this is a priority that you can take in your creative process, then just know that it's never ending. This definitely does not mean going into your fridge and throwing everything away. This means just start being more intentional. Like I said, let your life absorb this information, not get drowned in it. It probably comes without saying, but doing these practices are going to nurture your body to help you be more awake, more aware, more inspired, more creative. I'm not telling you to do my exact lifestyle, but just be more aware and find something that works for you. Find the diet that works for you. Find the lifestyle that works for you. Find the products and tools that really help you nourish your body and take the best care of yourself because it truly is your temple, especially as a creative. You are the one who's gonna be creating, nobody else. You need to be on your A game. You need to be the most nourished, fulfilled version of yourself. And the only way you really can do that is to take care of yourself. As you take care of yourself, ultimately you're going to need money to do that. And that is this third phase, which is your creative career or your business. The freedom that comes from this lifestyle is going to be the finances that you're able to bring in to fund all these things. I'm not saying that money solves all the problems, but money is gonna be an avenue to help you reach what you want to reach if you use it correctly. And that might mean different things. I've been running my own business and I'm constantly looking for ways to shift my business. For other people that might be working a full-time job in a really awesome creative role that they have so much power over, their coworkers are amazing to work with, their boss gives them so much freedom, that's amazing. If you have a job right now that you are in love with, that's great, I think it's so common for everyone to say I hate my job but it's it's also very cool to love your job that is what we're all shooting for but this is where manifestation really comes in and this is about going back and revisiting really what that creative lifestyle looks like what are you gonna do to make that happen if it is the slow mornings of waking up and having the tea and going to your studio and having a long lunch what do you have to do to make that happen? If it is waking up and bringing a bag lunch to the studio and then going to the theater and then going over here and bopping around and having a lot of fun, what do you need to do to make that happen? If it is a little bit of both and having a really intentional, just present life, however that is, what do you need to do to make that happen? That is the first question. I think it is a question that sometimes we overlook too, because again, I think we think that like goals are this crazy thing that lives almost in the heavens and we're down here. And it's really goals are like literally on the same path. Because again, I arrived here and I had goals and now I've achieved a lot of those goals. We are, it's all on the same path. It's all attainable and achievable. Start out really by just following a, what do you need to do to make this happen? Train. If I'm gonna use the first example of, I am an artist and I want to be able to sleep in and have a super slow life and spend the majority of my days just creating art with very loose deadlines. What do I need to do to make that happen? I probably need to have enough financial stability to be able to have that income coming in without me having to hit all the deadlines. What do I need to do to make that happen? Well, I'm gonna have to shift my business because right now I'm working with a lot of people with a lot of deadlines and I'm gonna need to not work with them so I don't have deadlines. Okay, what do I need to do to make that happen? I should probably start an Etsy shop since I haven't already. What do I need to do to make that happen? I need to go on Etsy.com. I need to make an account. I need to, okay, what do I, at, at that point I'm kind of like, okay, this I know the next thing I need to do. So then I'm gonna go on Etsy, I'm gonna start my shop, and I can kind of start it all over again from that step. You're really following this goal down the line and realizing that it's really not that complicated if you just ask yourself a few questions and then do it. I think this is already a much better system than just kind of saying, I have this goal and I'm gonna visualize it every night. Visualization is great, but we need to take action to make this happen. By the way, what does your ideal creative lifestyle week 
look like? Is your slow? Is it fast? Is it in between? Let us know in the comments below. I am very interested to hear that. From here, I would say the next step is to create that manifestation lock screen. If you've seen any of my other videos, I've talked about this before, which is basically at the beginning of every month, you're gonna have a screen with one to two goals that you have for the end of that month and a few systems to make it happen. You're gonna open it up and you're gonna see it every day. So that's why I call it manifestation. You're literally going to the thing that you look at the majority of the day, which is your phone lock screen to open your phone. We all know that we're seeing that a lot. Draw it up on a pretty design platform like Canva and use a really pretty font. Add a little graphic or a picture, an emoji, make it cute. And speaking of making things cute and making things intentional, after we have addressed all of these different elements, we need to turn our routines into rituals. And this is like just all going back to being intentional about this. All going back to like, if we want to stay creative, we want to be intentional with our lives. And this was taken from my friend Ash, who actually texted me one day and she just said, you know what? I'm gonna replace the word routine with rituals because I just want to look at life that way. And I completely knew what she meant. When you are in pursuit, taking the next inspired step, it is very easy for us to feel like we're always reaching for something. Like goals are amazing, systems are amazing, but it's very easy to get caught up in it to the sense that we feel like we can't be present in our moment. The day just flies by, we have all these things to do. I, I can think of five things I have to do right after I'm done recording this video. And sometimes the days feel like they can just kind of get away from you. Day to day, I want you to start shifting your mindset from having routines to having rituals. I want you to start romanticizing these days because when you are striving to be more creative for a more inspiring home studio, a more nourished and healthy body, a more strategic and focused career, it is very easy for us to get lost and forget what we have have right now. Numbers are amazing. We don't want them to be our whole life. So going back to planning your day, aesthetically plan your day. I, do, I, I don't understand why productivity does not have to be fun and cute. It just, it should be, it should be pretty. It should be aesthetic. It should be beautiful. Everything you look at on your home screen, everything you look at for work, you should be able to somehow make it beautiful. Whatever you are in power of changing and shifting in the way that you work, just like you're treating your home, like it's a million dollars. You got to treat your day like you are already living this goal. How would you walk down the stairs if you woke up tomorrow and you were living this dream life? Things would be different. You wouldn't just like pummel down the stairs. <laughs> you would gracefully probably come down the stairs or you would just touch things a little differently and really look at things and say, wow, I have this, this is in my life. So these rituals can be little things, right? I know a lot of rituals I have is making my bed every day. When I'm doing the dishes, I turn on a show that I really like, so it's more enjoyable. Color coding every single thing in my calendar, checking things off and having that satisfaction and warmth of seeing something pretty just marked off. Remember, creativity is the ability to bring into existence something new, and you need intention in order to be creative. Creativity is having a passionate intention towards bringing something into its will. And I think ultimately all of this has to do with just being more intentional about things in your life. I am personally so excited to see what you are able to bring into your life and to the world by putting some of these practices into play. See you next time. We're talking about how to stay creative. Lower. I'll just sit up straight. The freak, my cat wants to come in. Hold on. The lifestyle that you want and not you have. But I always get this messed up. Treat your home in a way. How do I say it? Look how pretty it is. It's all the flowers falling.